Welcome back to AtScale. I'm Court Johnson, and this is our course on cloud transformation. Last time we discussed the difficulty companies face when trying to migrate to the cloud from their on-prem data environments. In this section of the course, Chris is gonna walk through how to connect AtScale's intelligent data fabric with BI tools such as Excel and Tableau, and with modern data platforms such as AWS Redshift, Snowflake, and Google BigQuery. So welcome. Welcome to the next session in our uh, cloud migration course. My name is Chris Oshiro. I'm the VP of Sales Engineering for, for AtScale. Uh, and in today's session, what I think I'll cover is how AtScale makes it possible to move to the cloud. There's certainly uh, several initiatives of why you might want to do this. There's uh, IT initiatives to move to the cloud for, for cost and complexity purposes. There's a ton of cost parameters that are achieved by moving over to the cloud. Uh, and then beyond that, there's a data modernization effort that not just takes costs into consideration, but also new business insights, uh, new ways of analyzing data, et cetera. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take a look at the architecture and why AtScale actually makes this possible. So from an architecture perspective, AtScale is installed on an instance on the cloud. Consider that a, uh, uh, like a virtual machine or, or an EC2 instance or what have you, a Google instance, what have you. It sits on the cloud and doesn't have to, by the way, but for the most part, will sit on the cloud. And then you will have two different types of users that would access at scale. The first is your at scale design center user. That is a cube developer. They'll use a UI to uh, build out a, a schema, uh, a collection of tables, et cetera, and then publish out a at scale virtual cube that gets consumed by the BI tools. Uh, important here that we support both MDX and SQL because that means that the breadth of BI tools that could connect to at scale and then you're able to control the data definition because we're publishing out that virtual at scale cube. Uh, we will work very uh, natively with the cloud platform. So we'll uh, configure uh, towards BigQuery, Redshift, Snowflake in, their, in the way that they want to communicate with. And we also create a concept called adaptive cache. Now think of adaptive cache as intelligent aggregate tables. Uh, those aggregate tables, we use some heuristics, we use uh, some predictive algorithms to generate them, we maintain them over time. And when we have that cache store uh, created, queries that come in from the BI tools, again, via MDX or SQL, they're going to come in through AtScale. AtScale is uh, very aggregate aware and is able to redirect queries to the adaptive cache instead of raw table scans. And that's important because that's going to, uh, number one, it's going to save us money, right? Because we're not doing raw table scans all the time. But it also improves performance uh, for your BI tools and your BI uh, expectations, right? You want to have that speed of thought. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the software. So here on this screen, it's a little bit cluttered. I'll clean it up, I promise. But on the left-hand side, we have three at scale consoles. One is looking at Google BigQuery. One is looking at Snowflake, and the last one here is looking at Redshift. Uh, and if you're sneaking really carefully, you'll notice that I'm actually one at scale install. So you have here an at scale master node uh, looking at a, uh, the consistent port. So in this example, I actually just have one at scale install looking at three different cloud platforms. And on the right hand side, you have a, a very typical uh, Tableau dashboard, and I, I put a highlight on three KPIs that are looking at the three different cloud platforms. So you are using one instance of at scale to orchestrate across these different uh, data services. So let's go ahead and refresh the, uh, the KPIs. I'll go over here to my uh, Google BigQuery uh, KPI. Let's refresh this. We'll do the same thing for, uh, for Redshift and for Snowflake. And what you're gonna see on the left-hand side is you're going to see those new inbound queries uh, coming in. So on the at scale side, if we refresh this query, you'll see that this is a 1237. Now we'll see a 312. We'll see the same thing for Snowflake and for Redshift. Right? So we're getting all these inbound queries. And if I were to expand any one of these, you'll see that Google BigQuery is receiving an inbound query. And then we're sending out another one uh, using a Google, uh, Google BigQuery dialect. And that's true across the board. So our dashboard now will have updated data, is all pulling from those individual data platforms. So let's take a look at what that configuration might look like. 
if I just expand this, take advantage of a little bit of real estate here, zoom in just a tad. You can see in this instance at scale, it's configured to, to four different data source sources. Well, let's go ahead and concentrate on uh, the Google BigQuery and the Snowflake and Redshift. And if I click on that data warehouse, you'll see that at scale has uh, in, in the product has a native way to configure a Google BigQuery. It's looking at a particular schema. Uh, Google BigQuery actually requires a JSON uh, service credential in order to connect to it. It's a fairly uh, simple configuration. You have an extra option to configure against a Google uh, Cloud bucket, uh, very similar to S3, for example, so that you can communicate to various different forms of, uh, of uh, the data storage. The same is true for a Snowflake. The only difference is that Snowflake has a different approach, right? We have uh, the, the host database where you use name and password. And when you think about something like Redshift, Redshift has a slightly different approach in the sense that you have access keys and secret keys in order to connect to your instance. The beauty of this approach is that from the, from the at scale side, we have a series of projects. I've created a Google, uh, Google BigQuery project, Redshift project, and Snowflake project. And then from one Tableau instance and one Tableau dashboard, we're actually merging this and looking at it in one uh, particular visualization. So the way AtScale makes this possible is we're presenting a business-centric view of the data. And the business user actually doesn't know where the data is coming from. They have dimensions, they got hierarchies, they have measures that are organized in a way that makes sense to them. They're dragging and dropping them. They're bringing it all together. AtScale is orchestrating this, making the performance uh, you know, very, very good, and is also creating this adaptive cache under the covers so that the performance improves, but it also saves us money on the back end because we're not doing raw table scans over and over again. So thanks a lot. This is uh, the conclusion of this particular session, and uh, join us for our next. As Chris showcased, Data Architects use the AtScale Design Center in conjunction with the company's data warehouse to publish a business-centric view that is consumed by BI tools supporting both MDX and SQL. It's important to remember that AtScale presents a business-centric view of the data, employing hierarchies and measures organized in a way that makes sense to the business user. In the next video, Chris delves deeper into the AtScale adaptive cache and how these intelligent aggregate tables can save companies money and improve BI performance. We'll see you next time.